for what seems like ages now I have been sewing with this machine which I like to call a beast and it's actually on loan from Faf but then sometime this year I had to work with a much more entry-level sewing machine which is um, the Ambition line sewing machine from Faf as well. I also had to work with another beginner friendly sewing machine in the course that I did which is on the Domestica website. Link in the description box below. So from my experience creating my beginner friendly course and a few more tasks that I did with the other sewing machine, it got me thinking what would I actually do differently if I were completely new to sewing clothes or soft furnishings or anything like that with a sewing machine? From the decisions that I would make, buying the machine, setting it up, all of that. I'm going to spill all those thoughts out to you and I hope you find this video useful and you share it with someone who you think would find it useful when they're starting their sewing journey. My name is Juliette Uzo of SoSewNatural.com you're absolutely welcome to this video. Contrary to the very first sewing machine that I bought in 2013, I would actually do things differently. I'll spend some time researching and finding out a bit more about the sewing machine that I'm going to get, what it can do. I would watch a few reviews, obviously on um, the internet. So, well, it could be TikTok, on YouTube, wherever it is. I would find out from people, real life people, find out their experiences using those sewing machines before I actually decide. That's because back then, I say back then, it's only 2013, but when I started, I didn't actually know about automatic features that sewing machines could have. You know, things like buttonholes, things like speed control, automatic threading, you know, little things like that. I would actually take some time to find out about those additional features that sewing machines these days have. And I'll probably you know, compare all the different brands that are out there on the market before actually going ahead to buy. The way I got into sewing, one day I'll sit down and tell you my story on this channel. When I finally decide on the machine that I would like to get, obviously after seeing other people's experiences, I would actually watch setup videos or study the manual. Compared to the way that I did it back then, which was just like a basic DVD, <laughs> a, a DVD that I just plugged into the laptop and um, watched the, it was a, it was an animated setup of the sewing machine that, uh, that helped me to start using that machine with lots of hiccups. But what I'll do differently is I would actually watch real life people <laughs> setting up their sewing machine and just follow them step by step. Rather than using, um, you know, random lining that's been cut out from an old garment, I would actually use real projects to practice and get used to it. That's what I'll do differently. Another thing that I'll do is to practice speed control or speed regulation from the very get go because I struggled back then. I really struggled with controlling the speed of my sewing machine because I'll just put my foot down and it would race. Like it really put me off for the first few weeks. And um, what I'll do differently is just take my time, use my bare foot to practice speed control and get used to the motion of controlling the speed of the sewing machine. So rather than getting super frustrated whenever my machine gets out of sync and things just, the stitches don't look right, what I'll do differently is just get into that habit of re-threading the sewing machine whenever I feel like the stitches aren't looking right. Because most times it just has to do with the threads not you know, uh, not being aligned the, the way they're supposed to be. So what I'll do is I'll just start from the beginning, re-thread the whole thing. Cause it was a major issue for me when I was a total beginner to using sewing machines. That's something that I would really recommend. In my early day, I thought I was such a pro that I would just, you know, plunk in the fabric there and sew away. What I'll do differently would be to get into a routine, an actual sewing routine. So you know the whole thing of making sure you've pulled out enough threads to the back of the machine, put the fabric in and pull the presser foot down. Because I always forgot to get that presser foot down. I didn't get into that routine. So making sure that I pull the thread to the back, press a foot down before stitching. And when I get to the end of my stitching, I'll have enough threads pulled out before snipping. 
that I, I always always I, I'm, I'm I don't do that anymore <laughs> but back then I always used to cut you know cut the threads as short you know as short as possible but then it always backfired because when I start a new stitch the whole the machine just went out of sync and it was just a pain so I'll do that differently you might not believe it when I say it but I love inserting zips I think the reason why I love inserting zips now is because of the pain that I went through learning how to insert zips especially invisible zippers the invisible zipper insertion tool that I had back then which is the foot so I say why did I say tool the zipper foot that I had then was just not the best and um, oh, it really did cause me a lot of pain or heartache not heartache but like it stressed me out and I'll recommend you get a really good zipper foot especially the invisible zipper foot it's so strange <laughs> I didn't have any family members who sewed I didn't have any friends who sewed so everything was just learning as I went along I did not know that there was something called an overlocker strange I know but I didn't it took me ages to know how to finish off the raw edges of fabrics and the moment I found out about the overlocker I jumped on it without even doing my research but that's a story for another day what I would do differently is learn how to use my machine to finish off the raw edges of fabrics rather than jumping in and buying an overlocker and spending all that money I'll learn how to finish the raw edges of my fabrics or my garments using the zigzag foot and the zigzag function in my sewing machine buttonholes buttonholes is another thing that I would not shy away from shying away from buttonholes really held me back because I actually really love buttons I love garments that have buttons in them but it took me a while for me to get into buttonhole making I think it was after doing the sewing bee that I really got into adding buttons to clothes because I always I just I would rather go for zippers than buttons but buttonholes is something that I would have you know learned from the beginning as a starter you don't want to undo your machine and look at the in inner mechanism of the machine but I really do think that rather than shying away from cleaning my machine back then I should have spent a bit more time just learning how to clean it so I wouldn't have had all the issues that I had with it back then if you're a beginner please remember to clean your machine as often as possible I mean you don't have to dig deep and do all these crazy stuff no just you know take away the top layer top layer remove the um the plate this that top plate that goes on top of the machine and uh, just use a little brush you could use a makeup brush you could use a a, a paint brush like a like art paint brush or do you know the new one that i learned about pipe cleaners you can use those to clean the inside of your sewing machine it will just pick all the dust out for you so clean your machine as often as you can that's what i'll say to myself how many years ago now about eight to nine years ago nine years eight years ago and this one is really 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 important and i know even i shy away from it till now take your machine in for servicing as regularly as possible that's the one that i would really recommend for everyone whether you're a newbie or you're a pro or you're just just do it please just take that time I know it's hard staying away from our sewing machines we get that attachment <laughs> we get attached to our sewing machines that we don't want to let them go for two weeks but just take that time out for your machine to get serviced I really want to know what you would do differently or what you would have done differently say for example you were completely new to sewing today based on what you know let us all know in the comments section below I would really love to hear your thoughts and I wonder if anybody else feels the way that I feel now if after watching this video you decide actually I want to buy a machine I have this video here on the screen which shows you things that you need to think about before buying a machine secondhand and I'll meet you over at that video and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day all the very best take care bye